So we are here today to talk about how you can leverage referral partnerships to generate leads quickly for your firm. So for anyone who attended last um, month session, we did a high level overview of, of all the different lead gen strategies that are available to you. And today we're really gonna dive into one lead gen strategy, referral partnerships. So I just wanna know in the chat for anyone who attended, if you've implemented anything since last session, just let me know, or if you've landed on the lead gen channel in addition to what you're already doing, I'd love to hear about that. Okay, and as a recap, marketing is a numbers game. We need X qualified eyeballs to get Y qualified leads to get Z number of clients. So that is really what we are talking about in all of these marketing mentor sessions, is how do we get more leads? How do we get more clients? And my goal in these sessions is to make business growth simpler for you by making online marketing simpler. I think we can all agree that online marketing can be um, feel pretty complicated at times, especially with all the channels that are available to you. And I really wanna um, demystify uh, online marketing for you in these sessions. And so we are really focusing on how do we get you more leads? How do we get you better leads? And how do you get more sales ready leads? And so, these sessions focus typically on one ask, one of these three prongs, either lead generation, lead qualification, and lead nurturing. So for anyone who's new here, um, definitely go check out the replays. We have already covered lead qualification and lead nurturing in some of the past marketing mentor sessions. Um, they are about 20, 30 minutes, with the exception of last month's session, was a, which is about an hour long, and that's all about lead generation from a high-level um, overview. So I highly recommend going back and watching those replays if you haven't yet. Okay, so diving into referral partners. Why should we use this as a marketing strategy? Well, right now your best prospects and clients likely come through word of mouth at this point in time. Maybe all of your prospects and clients come through word of mouth or maybe just your best prospects. But um, you know, when we get referrals, people are, prospects tend to be more sales ready um, and they've already been pre-sold by whoever's referred. So we're really just looking up to, looking to dial up your referrals by using referral partners. It's a system systematic leveraged approach and helps you increase your referral lead flow. So just one partner, one solid partner could mean many, many leads, many, many clients over the lifetime of the relationship. Plus, um, I find that referral partnerships are relatively quick um, in terms of all the work involved and what your responsibility is um, in the partnership in order to see some results. When we look at all of the marketing channels available to, to us, um, I find that this is a quicker channel. It's also a lot simpler. As I mentioned, you get more sales ready leads and one great partner can equal many referred leads. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into detail on this chart. We talked about it in our last session, but I do want to just show you that when we're looking at all of the possible lead gen channels that are available to you, partnerships and business development, is up here at the top. Skill sets required, you just need to be able to talk to a partner. Budget required, you need a couple hours of time every month. Um, and it's already included in James Amplifier, so you're not spending any additional resources um, to work on your referral uh, partner system. As I said, the best part is that the hardest part of cultivating referral partnerships is setting appointments and James Amplifier takes care of this for you. So Amplifier guarantees two appointments per quarter with new referral partners. Um, it typically takes the team about an average of two to three hours per set appointment. So this is um, time that you and your team don't have to worry about and all you have to do is show up for the new appointment with a referral partner. And why do we do two a quarter? Because we find that consistent new relationships and steady growth is important, but we also don't wanna overwhelm your calendar. We know that you have a lot of other work to be doing. Um, so we don't want you to have 20 <laughs> referral partners to be speaking to every month. Plus, it takes some time to cultivate the partnership and make sure it's the right partner for you. And to that end, if an appointment that we set is 
ever not a good fit for you, you can let us know and we'll book you another one. So the team has set over a thousand referral partner appointments at this point, and they know what works. And I may let Cara speak to this a little bit. Um, Cara, can you just talk about kind of how you guys have refined this process and of the yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm confident in saying that no one else has set as many referral partner appointments for law firms as we have at this point. And we've really kind of tried everything and really honed in, you know, the, the honed in on, on the most effective kind of direct, concise approach, the approach that works. Um, at, we've been doing it, gosh, for, you know, more than two years now, uh, setting referral partner appointments. And we were trying, at first, we were using a lot of postal direct mail outreach. Um, a lot of advice, you know, there's a lot of advice out there to approach referral partners in that way. Uh, we certainly, we were certainly kind of going all in on the, the postal and, and kind of, you know, hybrid calling approach. But what we found with the, the, the postal approach, one, it, it takes time for you know the mail to arrive right so there's there's um, a delay in you know when you can kind of start that relationship and then people weren't either weren't opening it or just weren't responding it wasn't resonating um and it was just inefficient so uh we pretty quickly kind of moved away from that and really you know, created some some scripts and some templates and some emails that put the calling and emailing, you know, at the forefront. And really, that's where, that's how we're effective. And, and that's how our, our team, our small phone team here is able to set so many referral appointments for you. So it's definitely been a, a process. And it's definitely one that, you know, we, we just feel so confident about now. Um, you know, we're really, we're really good at setting these appointments and to reinforce uh, what Lauren said, you know, we want, we're, we're setting high quality appointments for you, right? I mean, it's, it's our, our common goal, right? It's in both of our best interests. Of course, you know, the goal, the long-term goal is to get you, is to hook you up with referral partners who are going to deliver long-term referral business, right? And if you jump on a call with, with a referral partner that, that we set you up with and, you know, you kind of go through the initial screening and you realize eh, this, this really seems unlikely that this attorney or this professional would be willing or, or really just would be able to send me the type of client that I'm looking for. It doesn't seem like they would commonly come across the type of client that I'm looking for. No problem. You let us know and we, we replace that appointment as soon as possible. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it back to Lauren, but, but we've definitely refined the process to, um, you know, to kind of its, its most effective core. Yeah. And I just love this because it takes a lot of time and effort to figure out what works. And if you're doing it on your own and, or, um, your assistant at your firm's doing it on your own, it's kind of trial by fire. Um, and I just like that you guys have the process so dialed in that you can set appointments consistently, high quality appointments consistently for each firm. Okay, so as we mentioned, all you have to do is show up for the appointments that we set. Um, I am gonna get into in a second um, what to say on the appointments because we know that's a common question. So um, here uh, people often ask, who should I reach out to as a prospective partner? And the short answer is you don't have to do it because Amplifier is doing it for you, but um, we found that about 75% lawyers and 25% allied professionals is the right mix of referral partners. So Cara, I am gonna hand it back to you and let you speak a little bit on this and how you guys came to this ratio. Yeah, and, and again, this was kind of part of that, you know, refining process. So um, initially we were doing half 50-50. We were doing half attorneys, half allied pros. Um, and, and we're still, you know, a bit flexible in this, you know, in this breakdown. But for the most part, we've found that attorneys are just in general more accepting, kind of more open to referral alliances than kind of 
the umbrella of, of professionals as a whole. And again, like there's some, there's definitely some uh, give and take there, but attorneys, you know, like yourself, they, they understand immediately the value of a referral partnership. They're more than likely looking to grow their own referral network. So the offer of, of connecting to discuss a new referral relationship resonates immediately with the attorneys in your area in non-competing specialties or um, sort of, you know, attorneys who would come across the type of client that you're looking for. So we uh, wait, you know, a little bit more heavily on the, the lawyer side and then uh, typically fill it out with, with allied professionals being, you know, professionals in, in your area that would commonly come across the clients that you're looking for. Yeah. And I'd love, Kari, you to speak a little bit to how you guys choose um, who to reach out to and what kind of qualifying factors you guys are looking at when doing that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So during um, onboarding or whenever you sort of initially start the referral partner outreach program with us, we work with you to kind of identify some high level categories of, of attorneys and professionals who you know you're confident would would make quality referral partners for you so so these are just categories so um of course in the area of injury personal injury you know that could be uh medical professionals chiropractors physical therapists um you know, folks who, who, you know, you're probably already connected to, you probably already have a small network of those folks. We want to, we want to kind of increase and double down on that. So, so you're just kind of helping us identify those key categories. And then we do all of the heavy lifting as far as creating the list of prospective referral sources in those care in those categories, in those areas. So, um, you know, our team is researching these uh, these prospects online. Ideally, we're reaching out to referral partners who are marketers themselves, meaning, you know, they have a decent website, you know, maybe they have some, some great Google reviews. They're doing, you know, their part to promote their own business or their own firm, meaning more than likely they're, they're probably busier. They probably have more business to pass on to you. Um, but there is a, a small, you know, a, a vetting process essentially. And then once we ha compile the list of 50 prospective partners, we give it to you for a once over. You let us know who should be added, who should be removed, or, you know, you just approve it. As soon as you approve it, our team goes to work right away. And we typically will set an appointment that very first day that we're working on, on your account. So, um, you know, a lot of times, so, so often when I talk to attorneys about this, they say, I don't even have the time to, you know, create the list. That can sometimes be the most time consuming part, right? It's like, you have to sit down, you have to dedicate, you have to block out the time. So we're trying to, again, like so many of the elements of, of our marketing amplifier program, we're trying to take that burden off your plate. And like Lauren said, you know, your one job is to show up to, to that appointment. Yeah. And just to reinforce what you're saying, uh, it would be very easy to um, scrape together a list of all the chiropractors in an area, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a high quality um, referral partner. So you guys are doing a lot of vetting work initially before you even compile that list of 50 and put it in front of the attorney. Right, exactly. And, and you know, you may not know you know, the categories of professionals that would be best, you know, maybe you're just starting out or, um, you know, you just haven't had much success. So we can certainly, you know, we, we have recommendations. We can certainly share what has worked, you know, of course, for us in the past with other, with other um, firms in your, in your area of practice. But, um, you know, in the end, it's, we work together to kind of identify those. And then, of course, the geographic region, you know, we, we, um, we identify all of that and then, and then go to town, go to work. That's great. Okay, so this is a common question, which is what should I say during the initial conversation with a prospective referral partner? So once the appointment's set, you show up and, and what should you say? So we have some tips for this. We are also gonna be following up this um, with the recording of this workshop and a worksheet that you can print out and then just have at your desk that has the pre-call, during call and post-call, all the action steps you should take. So we're really trying to make this easy on you.
But the short answer of, um, to this question is the call is really, we want to make it all about the referral partner, asking about their practice, um, understanding a little bit about what types of clients they uh, receive, how they get clients, how many clients they get. Um, as long as you focus most of the conversation on them, you'll get a pretty good idea of whether they're going to be a good partner for you or not. Kind of like an initial screening, like you would do for a new client. Um, then after they've recapped what's going on in their practice, who they're serving and how they're serving them, you can quickly provide the same information about your practice. Kara, do you have any more that you'd like to say about the initial screening? Um, I'll just add that one of the reasons we are setting phone appointments for you and even pre-pandemic, we were always suggesting that first screening call be a phone appointment. So it's sort of low risk in that, you know, if you go through, you know, this initial screening, you can tell pretty quickly, you know, if this is a relationship you want to continue or if it's just, you know, maybe not a great fit. And if it's not a great fit, you lost five or 10 minutes of your, of your time on the phone, no big deal. However, if you're, you know, starting with a, an hour lunch or, you know, coffee or, or something um, that's a little bit, you know, a, a more of a commitment, uh, it, it makes it harder to kind of stay on, um, you know, stay consistent and stay on with, with, these, with these appointments. So, um, of course, Zoom works great too. But, you know, as far as um, you want, the, the initial call is super important for screening. And then, you know, just like any relationship, any friendship, you know, you'll get a sense of kind of slowly building that trust and building that relationship. And, and you know, hopefully it's, it's a long-term, a long-term relationship. But um, I'm, I know Lauren's going to talk about kind of cultivating the, the relationship too. So we'll, we'll get into that in a moment. Yeah. So just keep an eye out on your email inbox for the worksheet we'll be sending you after this. It's just some bullet points. So it's really easy to skim through um, every, every time you have a call. Okay, to Cara's point, how do I cultivate these new relationships? And a question we get a lot is, especially if I can't reciprocate with a referral. So we have a few different options here. One, you can send a nurture sequence. So um, you can use Amplifier for this. And Cara, I'm gonna have you chime in for each um, point if that's okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so well, Lauren is absolutely right. We hear this all the time that, okay, so I'm building this, this you know, rather large, robust referral network, but I, I'm worried that I don't always have a referral to, you know, give back to the chiropractor, give back to the family therapist or to the, you know, to the uh, debt counselor or accountant or whatever it might be, right? So um, that's a very good point, but that's also one of the biggest sort of points of value that you're getting through this program that that you're you know that you're a part of so like everything in the program we kind of bolster and support with content so though a one-to-one -one reciprocal referral relationship isn't always necessary and it's not it's not realistic you do need to provide some sort of reciprocal value right or some way of staying top of mind so um a uh, nurturing sequence, you know, an email, an ongoing kind of, you know, email uh, drip sequence that, again, is very um, educational, valuable. The content that we provide on your behalf for your referral partners is helping them grow their own firm or grow their own business, right? And really keeping you top of mind. Um, I think I'll stop there with this yeah. point, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it can, as your network grows bigger, it can be challenged or challenging to remember, oh, every month, every quarter follow up with these 10, 25 people. And so Nurture Sequence really takes that off your plate um, and really allows you to stay top of mind without you having to do a whole lot of work. Other things that you can give in return. You can mention your referral partner in your newsletter. You can have some handouts in your lobby. You could introduce them to a great vendor you love. You could share a high value marketing tactic that's working really well for your firm and you think they should know about too. Or you could even assist one of their family members. So there's lots of ways to give back to the partnership that aren't necessarily um, a referral. So 
don't feel the pressure that you have to reciprocate in the same way. And there's plenty of creative things you can do that still give them value um, in the relationship. Then maintaining communication, there's, you can send a handwritten card, you can send them a gift, you can send their office some goodies, um, you can invite them to party, office parties when the pandemic is over. <laughs> um, you can introduce them to other referral sources or you could make a donation to their favorite charity. So again, these are some really creative ways to give value, give in return and let them know that you appreciate the relationship um, and they don't take a lot of effort on your part. I like that, Leonard. Send a gift card to a good restaurant. That's awesome. Okay, so Cara, before I jump to a couple next things, is there anything else you would add to cultivating um, um, partner yeah. relationship? Uh, yeah, so so I'll uh, I'll quickly touch on two things. So. Um, Another great way to kind of maintain a communication is update, just send kind of periodic updates to your referral source on, on how, how the case is going. So um, this doesn't need to be time consuming, but just, you know, shoot maybe at, at sort of critical points throughout the, the case, just send them, you know, so that they're reassured that the client that they sent your way is being treated as a VIP, you know, really being taken care of. Um, and again, it kind of reinforces your appreciation for, you know, for that referral. And then in addition, uh, the, the other two kind of primary items that are included in your amplifier for the, in terms of uh, cultivating and, and really kind of growing these relationships were sending every other month a, a newsletter, a, a specific uh, professional newsletter. So this is, this is completely separate from the past client newsletter that's included in your program. This is a newsletter that's geared specifically toward attorneys and professionals, again, with content that really helps them grow their firm, marketing tips, helps them grow their business. Um, and, and then in alternating months, uh, we're sending um, what we call a prosperous professional journal. Again, same type of content, um, adding value, and, and just like any other newsletter, keeping you top of mind for, you know, the, the ongoing business. Um, certainly a periodic uh, phone call check-in with these folks, you know, again, 10, 15 minutes, how's business, how are you doing, how's the family, can really go a long way with uh, building these relationships. I always like to say, it's just like any other, it's like any other relationship, any other friendship, right? It, the more you kind of nurture it, the more the more it'll grow and, and you know, the, the more that kind of mutual trust will be built. So um, again, we, we, you know, we're the matchmakers, we set you up with these appointments, and then we uh, take over on the much of the follow up as well. Fabulous. So I want to make sure that everyone's taking advantage of this feature. All you have to do is show up to your appointments. If you have any questions, we're going to open up for questions in a second and they can be um, happen in the chat or you can come on screen and we'll talk through um, any questions you have about referral partners. But before we do that, I wanted to say two things. One, we're having our next session on March 25th. You will get emails about this. We're gonna be talking all about content marketing and ways that you can succeed with this inbound marketing tactic. And second, um, we did open up a new free community. You should have gotten an email today. It's not just for Amplifier subscribers, but for any law firm that's looking to network with other like-minded attorneys. I will drop this link in the chat in a second, um, but it's a great place for you to ask additional marketing questions outside of anything that's included in Amplifier, and we'd love to support you there. Okay, so Q&A. Does anyone have questions? Um, I will just stop the share because you don't need to see that screen. <laughs> um, I would love to answer any questions people have or let you just come on and talk through uh, questions you have around establishing your referral partner program. Uh, while we, while we uh, let people uh, think of these brilliant questions, really quick, I, just right before this session, um, I did get an email uh, from a subscriber asking, how do I add referral partner appointments to my program specifically? So um, contact customer success. Um, you can always contact me or Mike directly as well. But um, 
it, depending on uh, your program, it may be included already in your program and we'll, we'll get you set up. And if not, we'll uh, explain how to add it on for, for really, um, for, for pretty uh, inexpensively. So just reach out and we'll, uh, we'll get you set up um, to customer success, your customer success manager or um, myself or Mike, and we'll get, we'll get it, get it rolling pretty quickly. So Cara, um, Herman's asking, do you help nurture the relationship like scheduling when gifts are given? Um, what do you, I know that's not something Amplifier provides, but what do you recommend in terms of a system that someone can implement in their firm to help them keep track of when to reach out to referral partners and what to, what to say, what to do? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And like anything else, you really do need a system, you need a process, you need a way to track this kind of thing, and you need to, to make it part of that regular process, right? Otherwise, it'll just slip through the cracks. As much, as much of it as you can automate, you know, do that. So, you know, definitely use, lean on your CRM or even your practice management system, whatever you're using to, to really manage your firm, and just add these tasks into, you know, your kind of, um, your, your regular, you know, your regular flow, where, wherever it makes sense, kind of, you know, for, for your firm. But, um, you know, to Lauren's point earlier in the presentation, you have to have kind of a coordinated approach to all of this and um, automate as much of it as you can get help. You know, you personally, as the attorney, as much of, as, as much as you can kind of offload to your staff, offload to us, you know, the better. That's that's the way that you're going to be consistent and, and the way that um, you're going to be able to kind of regularly keep in touch. Gifts are great. You know, they, they can go a long way. Um, we added, uh, we're always adding more uh, digital cards to your portal. So you have access to those. Those are great little, um, you know, ways to, to stay in touch. So, um, but again, systemize it and, and just make it part of your process. That's what I would recommend. And do you think quarterly is enough for any of those manual touch points, like a gift or a call? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that actually sounds like a, a reasonable frequency. Yeah. Yeah. So one way you could think about it, um, Herman, too, is maybe batching that effort and saying, okay, this one day every quarter is when I tackle all of my partnerships and stay in touch. And then it can be easier to kind of get done and then forget about until that next day in your quarter. I think that can be a great way to, to nurture the relationship. Okay. So Leonard is asking, what do you think about offering joint podcasts or live stream on YouTube or Facebook? I think this is fabulous. It's just like um, mentioning someone in your newsletter, you're giving them more exposure and, um, live stream on YouTube or Facebook really gives them a lot of exposure, even more than a mention in the newsletter. So I think that could be a really great way to give value. I agree. Uh, Leonard, we do a lot of that type of marketing, you know, with, in James, with James Publishing, right? So we are always uh, partnering with other sort of complementary legal vendors and um, sharing our lists, right? So uh, there's a lot of value that goes into kind of that, that those partnerships. So if you can find the time to host a, a webinar, a podcast, um, a, certainly, a, you know, Facebook live, any of that from time to time, absolutely. So, and I, I also think that's a great way to kind of identify your top partners, right? So who are the folks that can, you want, you want the relationship to be mutually beneficial, right? So who are the folks who have a following, who have a bit of a list, you know, who have a solid, um, you know, not only current client, but past client list that you can really uh, cross promote and, and cross market. It's a great idea. Yeah. And to Car's point, you don't have to handle all partners exactly the same way. The higher value partners, you pay a little more attention to, you get in touch with them more frequently, just like an acquaintance versus a best friend, you talk to them at a different level of frequency. So you can reward um, the higher value relationships with more gifts, more opportunities to get seen through your audience. Okay, Mark is asking, I have a large list of folks to whom I can direct emails. I need to set up a program and have content to let them know what we do. Can you set them up for us? set that up for us. So Cara, I may let you answer this one. Yeah, I mean, absolutely we can. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
it would be, I think this should be kind of a one, more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but um, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what our, I mean, depending on what, who the contacts are, right? So if they're, um, if they're past clients you're trying to keep in touch with, if they're referral sources, um, either way, we can, we can certainly uh, set up uh, you know, campaigns and sequences. We have the content geared toward all of those, you know, all of those areas. So um, yeah, Mark, we'll, we'll be in touch and that's definitely something we can help you with. You're welcome. Okay, what is the best way to get in touch with someone? So I'm assuming that Maybe you have a question about the referral program or you want to chat with someone on the James team. I think that's what the question is asking. Um, Cara, what would you recommend? Um, Abby, maybe you could help us out with the email address if you could pop it in there. Um, we, we have a centralized um, customer success team help at jamespublishing.com perfect help at jamespublishing.com that's the best way also we have a great chat in the portal if you are in the portal um either either of those are are great ways so um you'll be um you'll be put into our queue right away if you um if you reach out either of those ways okay and then i do you see that one artist says he's only recently started a YouTube channel and it needs a lot of work. And Leonard, I just counter that with, it's still really valuable because it's a piece of evergreen content that lives on your YouTube site that both your referral partner and you could direct people over and over and over again um, as they have questions that pertain to that partnership. Anything okay. Else? I think that might be it. So thank you so much for attending today. Please keep an eye on your email. We will be sending out the replay along with the worksheet, um, talking through what to say on your referral partner appointments and also mark down um, March 25th in your calendar for our next marketing mentor session. We will be talking all about content marketing. Thank you guys for attending and we'll see you next month. Thanks guys.